Let me tell you a story. It all starts with this. In the air, in the soil, around us at all times, there's bacteria and fungi. Plant gathers sunshine, takes it inside of itself, and turns it into various combinations of carbohydrate, sugar, and protein. It sends these mixtures down to its roots and out into the soil. And the message is, I need this. If you bring it to me, I'll give you more sugar. Well, the bacteria hears this message. And the thing about bacteria is they're tiny, tiny, tiny little organisms. They make glue and they coat themselves in. And then they attach microparticles of sand, silt, and clay to their bodies to add more weight so that when they find a source of food, they won't be washed away. And then here comes the bacteria, all sticky. And they start going crazy, eating, 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 eating the delicious sugar. But there's a problem. All of that stuff is still locked up inside of the bacteria. So while the bacteria is having a grand old time down in the root bar, the plant is upstairs mixing up its tricks. This mixture calls a predator. In the form of a protozoa or a nematode or an arthropod. And they come. And they eat them. They move. And they ooze fluids out of their mouths. And now it's something that the plant can take. So the plant says, thanks everybody, I got what I needed. Now I need this. And it does this over and over and over throughout its entire life. Anytime we fertilize, use a pesticide, an herbicide, every time we till, we're interfering with this process. Fungi get upset. If you till and disturb their ground, fungi will just piece out on the whole deal. And it could take a couple of years to convince them to come back. We're not just interfering a little bit with a little piece. We are interfering with the main thing. When you add compost to native soil, the organic material breaks down and creates an enticing environment for the entire soil food plant. If we dump fertilizer onto a plant, especially the multi-fertilizers that are meant to cover the full spectrum of what a plant needs, that plant has no reason to make sugar. It's been fed, it just sits there. So the bacteria don't come. The fungi don't come. And if they don't come, the predators are not going to come. Here's the thing, somebody's coming. And if you don't populate your soil with the good guys, the bad guys are going to eventually find you. Oh, just imagine. So what does all of this have to do with being a worm farmer? All of those minerals and nutrients that went through the bacteria and the fungi, the protozoa, the nematodes, the mycorrhizal, the fungi eating nematodes, all of this that went through the worm is now in the worm casting. If it's present in the compost that you use as bedding, the worm eats everybody. Everybody. All of them go through the gizzard and they are crushed by that muscle. All of the minerals that are stuck to the bacteria bodies, all of the juices that are in the predators, everything goes through this worm's digestive tract, which is full of the very best enzymes. So if we combine this with compost in our garden, to make sure to never go anaerobic, or if you do go anaerobic, don't stay that way. With a combination of vermicompost and regular compost in your garden, how could you go wrong, really? It's like giving your plants superpowers. To do exactly what they've been wired to do since the very first little bacteria squirmed its way into the sun, And 
Worm castings are plant-soluble. 